Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And today we're going to be looking at one of the more mundane aspects of working with uh, MVS or ZOS. Specifically today we're going to be seeing what is the appropriate way or the best way, the safest way to copy load modules in MVS and ZOS. As you know, um, MVS is a record-oriented operating system, meaning that uh, the operating system is aware of the format of the logical format of data sets or or files as they call them in the x86 world and that uh, is great uh, especially when you have business applications that are record oriented um, such as um, in the old days ISAM uh, index sequential or uh, or otherwise um, sequ uh, ac uh, index data sets where you would have a record structure when I grew up a database was uh, made of a record that contained a name, let's say a last name, a, a an address, and let's say a monthly salary, and all this would be one record. Um, this is before people started to put in everything in uh, in uh, relational databases, as they do today. But in the old days, this would have been a record, and mainframes exist because. There were companies, or still are, of course, companies that have many hundreds of thousands or many hundreds of millions of those records. And so if the operating system is aware of the structure of each and every record inside the data set, that helps a lot and makes things much more efficient. And that's why MVS or ZOS is such a great operating system for applications where you have millions or hundreds of millions of of records uh, such as the credit card processing company is a very good example insurance companies banks airlines government companies or uh, for instance uh, highway companies all those benefit from having an operating system that is aware of how their data is structured now um, one of the outcomes of this of a record oriented operating system is that load modules themselves and when i say load modules from here on i mean binaries in the linux world or in the windows world those would be either called dlls or executables and even those are structured somehow as records and when you copy load modules in mvs you need to be careful with the blocking so you don't lose blocking information because if you copy uh, load modules and are not careful the block information the block information will be lost and when you try to run them again somewhere else they will not run and therefore there is a proper way to copy load modules and we'll look at it in this in this video so enough of the introduction now let's assume I have a case where I want to there I'm connected here to a at the University of Leipzig in Germany which has very generously granted me access to a to a ZOS system, uh, ZOS 2.1, even though it says your ADSD Z18, it's not really Z.18, it's ZOS 2.1. Uh, they just have this old screen, but that doesn't matter. And thank you again, uh, University of Leipzig. This is uh, this is very very generous of you. I'm working here on a real iron um, operating uh, computer, an IBM Z14 mainframe with. Uh, hundreds of gigabytes of RAM and dozens of CPUs and uh, and so we're going to be using this as my base what I want to do is uh, I'll there's going to be a we're going to create a load library load module library and then we're going to uh, going to copy it from here to another system and let's see how what is the appropriate way to to take load modules from one system and move them somewhere else um, so let me log in here of course I'm Moshix never going to tell you my password um, looks like I logged in just a few days ago. Okay, so um, make this a little bigger. Hopefully, you can all see this. So um, let's go look for some load module libraries. I can't really spot one. Let's see. Well, we can always take this one link clip, but that is far too large. Let me see what we can find here. If I wanted to copy this, this would be indeed very big, 3,200 tracks, uh, actually 2,850 tracks. Uh, yeah, that's way too big. 
but I had a video last week which we called um, there was a small load law let me see that there was a load library load module library that was quite fairly small which we could use probably for this yeah oh, okay sys1 sas mod 2 this just contains some binaries relating to high uh, to the um, to uh, to the IBM high level assembler and let's pretend I want to copy this from one system to the next um, what would I do um, let's go see the format okay so this is only 51 tracks fairly small perfect for what we want to do now if I wanted to copy this I would first of all um, let me see how we would do this yeah so that's what we're going to do we're going to create we're going to copy this ultimately by using the I, the TSO receive and transmit uh, tools and we've discussed this extensively somewhere in other videos TSO receive which we have an equivalent for, by the way, for MBS 3.8, TK4 has a receive command, but it's batch only, it doesn't matter. Even in ZOS, uh, receive and, and uh, transmit can be used both interactively on the TSO command line or, or um, as batch program. So this is, um, this is how this works. So let's create, first of all, a transmit uh, data set on, uh, where we're gonna copy everything over. Let's call this, uh, 3.2 allocate we call this Moshit YouTube XMIT okay and so first of all um, it's very important that we use here blocks in the allocation so I'm going to call this oops oh that, that was too fast sorry guys um, let me go and remove this delete it entered way too fast sorry about this let's do this again Moshix YouTube XMIT and then we say out allocate okay so we say here blocks and then primary quantity, let's make this, let's say, um, 200, 200 secondary. And now directory blocks is, uh, we put in here zero because we make this a sequential. And then we give this a, a record format of fixed block with an 80 record length. And very important, the, the block size, we're gonna make it 3,120. So let's press enter on this. Make sure to copy. If you need to stop here the video, do that now. Um, and that's it. I have now allocated this data set with this kind of um, format. So let's go here and let's look at it. Okay, so allocated blocks 210. Now, now that we have this ready, with the co correct blocking factor for load modules and re let's remember we're copying copying here load modules binaries um, and the safest way is to always package them with a with a transfit transmit um, package and uh, what other people call an xmit package so ibm xmit there's been some problems in the last few weeks with ibm not making anything below uh, ZOS 2.3 available, but they just fixed it, I think, yesterday. So it's now f finally working again. And um, transmit command, maybe there's some uh, command syntax. Let's see if they have some uh, examples. PSO XMIT example. Some examples here. Yeah. 
All right, so now we have what we're going to do is copy all the data sets. Uh, let's see how we're going to do this. somewhere else let's see here we can make this a little bigger for you let's see example three Okay, so let's try this and we say, let's go to the TSO command line. Oh, this is one of those, there's quite a few systems that don't allow you to get to the TSO command line. Uh, there's still a way to get around it. Um, what we do is we go to here and then we say, um, Xmit DA what was the yeah Oh there's an error there I think isn't it sys um, what was it again? So we may have, to, we can just point here and it takes it up to the upper line. And we can just say here, Moshix. Invalid data set name. Oh yeah, it's clear why. Let's save this back up again. Okay. Okay. right um, from this PDS to this sys okay how do we do this let's copy this Oh, it was temper. It was already lost. So let's find how we copy into a specific pre-prepared pre um, in a prepared uh, transmit data set. Um, TSO transmit TA. Okay. Let's see here. So let's look at the data set. DA sys out class out the D name out file yeah out data set okay so let's try this again six let's take this out out data set uh, YouTube xmit Uh, 
let's see here. Did this go well? Let's find out. Yes. So now we copy this and we can now look into it. Browse. Yes. Okay. So it's the it's. Let's look again at the command. Uh, sorry, I had this done this just. Oops. So this is the command transmit. We have to give it a note name just so the, the command is happy. This is the source and this is the output. And now that we have this, I can now go here, go to six and I can download it, receive, and I just say Moshix YouTube XMIT. And because we formatted this before and with the correct blocking factor, no information will be lost. And so we call this, I don't know, well, YouTube video so XMIT. And now, very important, we make this binary and TSO. Now, this is going to be a little slow because it's going to go all the way from Germany. But uh, once we downloaded this, we can go, go now to any other system. And I'll show you how to do this. thinking now where I could go and upload this but we can just pretend we had just uploaded this to this exact same system again but we will um, we will unpack it into a different data set so we can well, I can show you that it does work so anyway let's just uh, cancel this because there's no point it's gonna take a little while because it's it's of course as we saw, about 800 blocks. But this may leave the system in an undefined state, so let's just wait for it to finish. So in the meantime, let's go look up the receive command, which is very simple. Um, yeah, out DSN. That's another way to put it. I had written out data set, but you can just write out DSN. And the, oh, very important to avoid out of B37 a band means out of space within a within a partition data set. So no more directory entries in a in a PDS. So to avoid that, you should pre-allocate the uh, the the, de the destination system. But well, I don't think we need to do it in this case. So let's just wait. And one more advantage of doing this, you don't have to mess with the whole. Uh, EPSIDIC versus ASCII translation. So uh, packaging things into an, an XMIT package is the best way to transfer data whenever there is an x86 system, x86 system involved or any other system that's not on EPSIDIC. Uh, so what I'm showing you is the safest way to transfer not only load modules, binaries, but also anything that uh, that you don't want to be mangled by the transfer operation as you can see here we're transferring in binary and and therefore um, there's no translation of the character set from EPSIDIC to ASCII at all so I know that this is going to take a little bit longer because I look as I saw before the size of this partition data set for the load modules so we may have to wait maybe in a couple of minutes more why don't I stop it in the meantime and then I'll come back when this is done Okay, so I finished downloading it. As you can see here, this is the indirect file get um, that we just uh, executed. And so that went well. And so now let's assume I had logged into a different system now. This could be a different LPAR on the same mainframe or a different mainframe on the other uh, side of the, of the, of the world, of, the, of, the, of Earth, and, um, and then uploaded it again as binary. And of course, that's very important that you upload it as binary. Because every time you don't do binary, there's actually ASCII to EBCDIC table conversion going on. So let's say I just uploaded it. So how do I install it now? Uh, so I will go, and we know it's called Moshix. I uploaded with this name. So I would just do here, receive in data set. Uh, Moshix YouTube XMIT and 
just press enter again. Okay, so now it uh, it copied everything into this new data set, partition data set, Moshix SAS mod 2. So let's see how this looks. Oops. Here it is. Let's get some information about it. So this is clearly for load modules. This was done properly. And let's look inside. And we should see now, yeah, so we already know that this is seen as load modules because we have the access code here. Uh, 01, of course, for um, for privileged. Then um, uh, And then we have the residence mode and access mode 24 bit, 24 bit. Uh, this, by the way, should run Actually, this should run even on MVS uh, 3.8 as it is uh, out of the box, since this is 24-bit and 24-bit. I don't know if it's using any macros. It depends on macros. There are newer than MVS, and so I haven't tried that at all. But um, but just saying. So this should work anywhere. This obviously is 31-bit access mode. So um, this will not work on anything uh, older than MVS XA. Uh, residency can be 24 mid or higher um, and this is any so you can see here when we can look into the we will not see much of the binary code yeah um, so this is how you properly transfer load modules and just to say it again clearly if don't if you don't do it this way there is no guarantee that you upload them properly and I would say that most likely even if you use FTP in binary, you most likely uh, the load modules will not work at the destination. Um, so that's that's how important it is to do it this way. And just to recap, let's look again uh, how to properly allocate. Let's do it again. Uh, Moshix YouTube 2. Okay, this is again how to do it. You uh, use blocks here, the size. Directory block zero record format you'd use here FB record length 80 then block size 3120 and uh, leave this empty then it becomes a sequential data set so this is the proper way to do this um, anything else you're not guaranteed to get the load modules to work again on the target system so um, I hope um, that with this very short video we uh, looked at something new at uh, how to get more things accomplished in the in the mainframe world in MBS and ZOS. I hope this is very useful to you and for any questions uh, you can always post comments below this video or contact me directly and um, if you want to play with this kind of stuff you can always uh, go to my apply for an account on my uh, MBS system in the cloud by going to moshix.dynu.net. If you go there, you fill out the form uh, and where you, you ask your real name, your uh, email address, what it is you want to do on my system. And then if you do that, um, you can, we will get a logon, a TSO logon to my MBS system, MBS 3.8 in the cloud, which is accessible from anywhere, which saves you the hassle of setting up and maintaining and making sure it's always up and running. This system is up 24 hours a day, seven days a week, um, 300 and uh, whatever, the whole, the whole year round and uh, I make sure there is backups and uh, we have about a hundred people there and we can play with all those things there without the need to set up your own system. Uh, of course setting up your system is, is, is just as much fun um, but um, my MBS is production uh, quality it means that it's always up I make backups and I make sure that everything is uh, is nice and clean on that system. I monitor it all the time and I have some tools to monitor it. So if you want to do some production development, if you want to learn some stuff for MBS, do not hesitate. It's free. Um, I should have mentioned that. You can just apply here. I'm not really selling anything. Um, you apply to moshix.dynu.net, get your account and you will be uh, up and running forever. Anyway, I hope you had fun watching this video. I had fun making it. Uh, please do consider subscribing to the Moshix Mainframe channel if you're not subscribed already. If you like this particular video, please do press on the thumbs up button. I always appreciate those and see you soon again. Thank you. Goodbye.